Today in crypto, with so much excitement building around the decentralized finance market niche, which at this point is largely only existing on Ethereum, the question must be asked, why has Ethereum itself not mooned yet? The price of Ethereum has been as unexciting as the price of Bitcoin recently, with six weeks of sideways price action for Ethereum not breaking over $250, not falling under $217. What the heck is going on, man? My name is Lark, and this is where you subscribe for all of the hottest and all of the latest happening out here in the wild, wild land of crypto. Also, if you are new to the cryptocurrency game or you know someone who's just getting in and you still need help getting started, you know, figuring out all of the basics, then check out Cryptocurrency Explained. It is a course that I have made for beginners just like you. It is going to take you step by step through all of the basics that you need to know, like what is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? How do you buy them? How do you mine them? How do you store them? How do you build a cryptocurrency portfolio? And much, much more. There is a link down below in the description where you can learn more about that course. Okay, so there is so much happening right now on Ethereum. It's just, it's dizzying trying to understand all of it. We have dozens of very prominent decentralized finance applications. We've got stable coins. We've got security tokens, real estate. There's prediction markets. There's gaming. There's art. There's collectibles. There's bonds. There's treasury notes. There's more coming, by the way. Decentralized exchanges, governance protocols, decentralized organizations. We've even got identity solutions. There's enterprise blockchain solutions, bringing some of the world's biggest businesses onto the Ethereum blockchain. Look, that, that's just scratching the surface of what is happening on Ethereum. But of course, DeFi right now remains one of the primary narratives. And also the network has never been stronger. Decentralized exchange volume, it is soaring. There are more than $8 billion in stablecoins issued on Ethereum. Over $2 billion locked in decentralized finance. Active addresses and daily newly created addresses, they are maintaining a strong growth pattern. And the fee market for Ethereum remains very, very strong. In fact, the usage metrics for Ethereum show that it is thriving on a level only comparable to the height of the ICO bubble back in 2017, which should in essence mean that Ether is wildly undervalued. And I believe that Ether is wildly undervalued, but in spite of all of this stuff happening, the price it's just been stuck recently, sitting in an accumulation phase. And with so much going on, it seems to make little sense that Ether isn't mooning more. So let's unpack this a little bit and try to understand some of the reasons why ETH hasn't seen bigger price appreciation. Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. What are the key reasons to go out and buy Ethereum on the market right now? Well, there are two key reasons. One is speculation on the future of ETH 2.0, and the other is paying gas fees on ETH 1.0. And then there's one, also one reason which is not so key and is actually losing market share, which is Ethereum as collateral in decentralized finance. So let's first talk about ETH 2.0. At this time, around 120,000 addresses have 32 or more Ethereum, which of course is the number which will be needed for staking Ethereum on ETH 2.0. So buyers are speculating on the future importance of ETH 2.0 and continue to buy Ether in anticipation of this event. Many already have those moon bags packed, but of course we will continue seeing buying pressure as new buyers enter the market and as old buyers simply continue to add to their stacks. Now the second reason to buy Ethereum right now is to pay gas fees. So if you want to interact with one of those exciting decentralized finance protocols, you got to have Ether to pay for that. Or if you want to send a stablecoin transfer, you have to have Ether to pay for that. Or if you want to interact with a scam like Forsage, don't do it. Please don't do it. But if you do it, you're going to need Ether to pay for that. Or if you want to deploy your own smart contract, well, then you'll also need Ether to pay for the gas fees on the network. Right now, these are the biggest users of gas. There's other uh, sources that are using gas up as well, but those are the biggest ones. And for all of the DeFi hype, 
there are not many actual daily users of DeFi right now. And many of those existing DeFi users, they're already Ethereum investors. They don't need to go out and buy more Ethereum. They're just using little bits of what they already have. And do consider as well that the learning curve for newbies to onboard into DeFi is very, very high. And the third reason, of course, you'd want to buy Ethereum right now is to use it as collateral in decentralized finance, but we are seeing it in many ways become much, much less important. For example, we have Synthetix. Now, this is one of the most important DeFi protocols, and it uses its own native token for collateral. And then there is Ethereum DeFi Poster Child Maker DAO. Now, they have expanded their collateral types out, so now they are now accepting tokens, they're now accepting wrapped Bitcoin, they're now accepting real-world assets, so not just Ethereum anymore. And in fact, it's really stable coins that are driving a lot of volume in decentralized finance, not Ethereum. Well, ETH does remain a big player in DeFi in terms of collateral. The introduction of multiple assets into the mix is slowly eroding away ETH's market share as a DeFi collateral participant. As an example, Compound Finance has around $1.6 billion in assets locked up on their platform. Number one is the DAI stablecoin at around $800 million. Number two... USDC at around $400 million, and then number three, Ethereum at $220 million. Big difference. Now, what about some of the other factors that are working against the price of Ethereum? Well, a big one, of course, is that Ether lacks centralized exchange pairings, at least on par with like Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin and dollars they remain the currencies of choice when it comes to trading on centralized exchanges. And although decentralized exchanges tend to put more emphasis onto Ethereum, those same decentralized exchanges often offer token-to-token -to -token swaps without requiring Ether as a middleman between those transactions. Also, as we see more Layer 2 solutions rolling out across Ethereum, this is actually going to start putting pressure on the Ethereum fee market. So layer two fees, they're like one one thousandth of an on-chain transaction. It's not even comparable. So that's something to keep in mind. We will see more DeFi protocols starting to enable layer two solutions as the technology advances, creating a lessened need once again for Ether. Now, another factor working against the price of Ethereum right now is that the uncertainty around the launch of ETH 2.0. Now, a firm launch date for ETH 2.0, it is yet to be set. There was talk about July, and here we are. When ETH 2.0 actually gets a firm launch date, I think we can expect a significant rise in price as investors who are sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens will actually commit to the market. But until that happens, the risk to reward ratio is really not there for many investors who can go out and double their money overnight in the altcoin casino. And while we have seen a significant commitment by institutions to Bitcoin, they've actually spent far less on Ethereum in comparison. Even though Ethereum is number two in terms of institutional interest and in catching that institutional dollar it is miles behind bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset although many enterprises are actually buying and using ethereum which is very very important to note but the impact of that is yet to be felt in a very very significant way because right now it's just some big corporations but not all big corporations now, that is an area of price appreciation that I think is going to take a few years to see a big impact, but enterprise adoption will be critically important in the coming decade. Now, with all of that being said, am I worried about the price of Ethereum? No. No, I am not. It, along with Bitcoin, is my weekly rain or sh shine crypto purchase. It's all good. I just keep buying that ETH, man. Honestly, I remain incredibly bullish on Ethereum overall. The entire ecosystem of Ethereum is just incredibly exciting. The innovation, it's incredible to see it happening. And there are two coming uh, technological advances that I think are going to have a very significant impact on the price of Ethereum. And as bullish as I am on the DeFi narrative and also on the enterprise Ethereum narrative, those are two great narratives. 
At a nuts and bolts level, the biggest priced catalysts will be EIP1559 and ETH2.0. So let's start with EIP1559. Now, in case you are not familiar, this is a proposal to burn a portion of every transaction fee. So the goal of which is to make transaction fees much more predictable while at the same time introducing artificial scarcity for Ether. Now, this combined with the coming drop in Ethereum issuance could actually result in Ethereum becoming a deflationary cryptocurrency in the years to come. Obviously, we have to see all these things actually be implemented, but it seems that EIP-1559 will indeed be implemented. Just a question of when that happens. And the second big price catalyst will be ETH 2.0, which will fundamentally change the network, moving it to a proof-of-stake network, implementing sharding, which will greatly increase the throughput, and bringing in application-friendly web assembly, which is a big upgrade over the Ethereum virtual machine. But of particular interest to us as investors, we'll be staking and earning a passive income in Ethereum, which could see anywhere between 30 to 50% of the total supply of Ether locked up, creating massive market scarcity. But until we actually get a firm date and a real launch for ETH 2.0, I think that many investors are going to simply remain hesitant to commit their money into Ether in a more significant way. The people right now, they're doing a risk reward calculation. You, uh, you are, I am, that's what it is. Anyway, those are my two GUI for the day. Your question, what do you think about my rationalizations for why the price of Ethereum has not been moving more? Do they make sense? Or is it simply a case of that's just what's going on in the market right now, Lark? It's all the technical stuff. Ethereum's gonna moon soon. Don't worry about it. Let me know down below. I'd love to hear your opinion as always. Hope you're having an excellent weekend wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.